but not everyone was enchanted with Castaneda. In 1975, Richard DeMille, the son of filmmaker Cecil B., started to read the teachings of Don Juan. He would set in motion a controversial debate about the authenticity of Castaneda's fieldwork. When I read the teachings of Don Juan, I thought it was a sober, factual account of a strange experience in the desert with a very unusual Indian teacher. But as he read Castaneda's second and third books, DeMille was struck by inconsistencies in Don Juan's character. In the first book, Don Juan's personality is dark and foreboding and gloomy and and uh, there, there's a lot of menace in, in the air. <laughs> but in the second and third book, he was lighthearted, gay, made jokes. It was fun, you know. But he changed his teaching method by becoming a desert clown. But I thought, well, it's all right for Don Juan to change his teaching method. But as he looked closer, DeMille spotted something. Book one and book three covered exactly the same time period. And yet Don Juan's character was completely different in each account. There is no way Don Juan's personality could change from day to day. The only explanation is that you have a writer playing around. DeMille wrote to Castaneda asking to see his field notes. He said there was a big flood in Westwood, or Santa Monica, or wherever, and the field notes were in the basement, and they were completely destroyed by the flood. What a loss to science. Castaneda had always claimed that Don Juan was from a tribe called the Yaqui. But as DeMille checked anthropological sources, he discovered that unlike Don Juan, the Yaqui didn't use peyote in any of their religious rituals. The cactus didn't even grow in their territory. And there was something else. While checking through hundreds of sources, he discovered that Castaneda seemed to have copied other people's ideas. A book published in 1903 reported that the human aura was egg-shaped, with bristles standing out in all directions. In 1971, Don Juan told Castaneda that a man looks like an egg, with bristles bursting out in all directions. DeMille didn't just find one, but 200 such examples. For DeMille, there was only one logical conclusion. His method of work seemed to be going into libraries and finding things in them that he liked. And uh, in his following book, uh, they would come out of Don Juan's mouth. Don Juan did not exist. He uh, is a, a character in a story invented by... Carlos Castaneda. But despite DeMille's evidence, Castaneda's wife was not convinced. He thought that Carlos made it up. And I know that he didn't. I know that he went on those trips and everything. And I know that, you know, that it's, it's true. For a start, Castaneda's family have some evidence that he did do fieldwork in Mexico. This is a postcard from Sonora, Mexico, and it says, I have been here in Mexico for a while now. Take care. Ciao. See. Dearest Margarita, I was unable to write sooner because I just arrived from a three-week uh, field work in southern Mexico. Castaneda's son even had first-hand experience of his father's research. I would go with him on a lot of his field trips and spend a lot of time with him. Um, we would take trips to Topanga Canyon and to Mexico and, and I would actually be I guess, his little apprentice. I did remember meeting 
a Native American Indian in the desert. I was real little. I don't know that his name was Don Juan. For DeMille's charge that there were no field notes. There were boxes and boxes and boxes of field notes at his house in Westwood. Richard DeMille is absolutely wrong. Castaneda's supporters even had an answer to the most damning criticism of all, that Don Juan could not be a Yaqui because the Yaqui didn't use peyote. Don Juan had been exposed to many, many customs and traditions throughout Mexico because he had traveled extensively through Mexico. He was not a Yaqui who had never traveled outside of his territory nor traveled far from his group. In fact, thousands of Yaqui people had been exiled at the turn of the century and forced to live in different parts of Mexico and Arizona. Castaneda had always maintained that Don Juan had been part of this diaspora. I do think Don Juan Matos existed. I do not think the character is far-fetched, nor do I think he's an invention. It was Jay Fikes who would settle the debate once and for all. Down in Mexico, he had spent time with several shamans. Finally, I understood what the shamans did to help their people. They were doing rituals to prevent illness, to bring rain, to get the corn to grow, to get fish, to get deer, and to guarantee the things they need to survive as a people. But according to Castaneda, Don Juan was doing none of these things. He was more concerned with personal enlightenment. I just thought, well, it's a bit odd. It doesn't make sense given what I've observed. But maybe, maybe uh, Don Juan is an exceptional person. And so I gave him the benefit of the doubt at that point. Then, Fikes received some new information that seemed to support Castaneda. He learned that in the late 1960s, Castaneda had been seen in a neighboring Huichol community with a shaman called Ramon Medina Silva. Fikes decided to investigate. Since Ramon Medina Silva was now dead, Fike set about tracking down his widow. There was this clue that I wanted to follow up on about the widow of this Weechol shaman. So I decided to locate her and interview her. After years of controversy, it seemed at last there was an eyewitness that could finally corroborate Castaneda's story. I found her uh, living in a shack and uh, tape recorded interviews with her and uh, realized that she, she had met Castaneda. He definitely went to Mexico, there was no doubt in my mind. Fikes began to wonder if, in fact, Ramon Medina Silva was actually Don Juan there was a good reason why Castaneda might have changed his guru's name. Well, one of the things that anthropologists have often had to do in order to protect the people that help them learn about the culture is to give their key informants some kind of anonymity, and sometimes disguising entire cultures, giving them fictitious names. It occurred to me that maybe he was just protecting his informants. Uh, it's possible that Don Juan was actually the Weechel. It seemed that Castaneda's critics had been wrong. He did, in fact, have first-hand experience of Native American culture. 